So he just had a very insane last 30 laps here in the Cup Series event. Let's talk about the race we had at Worldwide Technology Raceway, a.k.a. Gateway. What a crazy race it was. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think about the race at Worldwide Technology Raceway and its finish? Let me know in the comments. Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. So this season was the third trip for the Cup Series to Worldwide Technology Raceway, aka Gateway. I'm gonna to try to call it Gateway the rest of this video. Starting out front for the event, a very phenomenal run during qualifying, his actual third pole of the season. He's becoming a really good qualifier, Michael McDowell. McDowell showed good speed throughout the day, had a top 10 car, led the early portion of the event. Track position was a big thing. But quickly able to get up to the race lead, was in my opinion the most dominant car all race and probably the most dominant car we've seen in a race all season I would say I would like to hear any other arguments but Christopher Bell he was phenomenal today there was no one that could touch him Christopher Bell would sweep stage one and stage two led a bunch of laps I think he led 80 laps in the event we will talk more about Christopher Bell in just a little bit a couple of events that we had happen during that span one thing was another NASCAR on Fox Blunder that I really wanted to point out because it was just so bad and I have not gotten a chance to make that NASCAR on Fox video because there's just news every day right now. I've been just so busy with work and making these videos. But they were talking about Josh Berry slowing on the front stretch. He was way off pace. He was up almost into the wall as well. They were talking about it for a good 15 seconds and never once did the camera point at Josh Berry during that time sequence was ridiculous. I think another point later on in the race, Christopher Bell and Ryan Blaney were battling and they randomly panned to fans instead of watching the epic battle. And by the time they got back to the battle, it was done. During that span, you saw a couple of different strategies throughout the stages that put multiple different drivers out front. At one point, Kyle Busch was leading the race with Austin Dillon behind him. RCR running 1-2. RCR had a great day. I think Austin Dillon ended up finishing 6th in the event. 6th, maybe 7th. He had a great race in the number 3 car. I was very happy to see that. I've been really down on Austin Dillon all year, but I am a big fan of Austin Dillon. I'm very harsh on him because I do like the guy a lot, but I'm also going to be harsh on him when it's deserved. Well, also during this span, Kyle Busch ended up battling Kyle Larson. We'll get this out of the way. We'll rip this Band-Aid off real quick. Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson were battling it out coming off of turn four. It looked like Larson might have tried to side draft him or squeeze him a little bit off of the corner. I'm not sure exactly, but he hit Kyle Busch in the door. Kyle Busch retali retaliated going into turns one and two. He hit him in the door and crowded him going into the corner. And then Kyle Larson just lost it. The way I looked at it, it was tit for tat. Larson hit Kyle. Rowdy hit Larson back. And unfortunately, Larson couldn't hang on to the car on the bottom side of the track. That's just that's just unfortunate, I guess. Larson was able to continue on, and Kyle Busch had a car that could have contended for a top five and ended up finishing behind the wall. All the usual. What'd you get out of here? It's just been an awful season. Anytime there's speed, there's there's issues, whether it's on pit road or on the track. Just need to figure out this season and need to stop the bleeding ASAP. Throughout the day, there was multiple drivers that were showcasing speed that haven't showcased speed a lot throughout the season. We'll start with Team Penske. Penske have been struggling. Ford as a whole have been struggling, but especially Penske. You expect Penske to be up there battling for the win. They're part of the big three. You have Penske, you have Gibbs, and you have Hendrick. Those are the three best teams in the Cup Series, and Penske have just not been very competitive all year long. But today you saw all three in the top ten pretty much all day. Officially turned around, guys. We are back, baby. We are back. We are back. Yeah. Classic. We are back. 
That's we right. are back. We are getting Doug back. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. We're the three best friends that anyone could have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. Cindric really impressed throughout the day. Led a good amount of laps. Was running in the top five all day. Blaney was running in the top five, top ten all day. And then you had Logano who was running anywhere between like 7th or 8th or 15th. I'd say he was probably the slowest out of the three Penske cars. Carson Hosevar, once again, really impressed. Was running top five, actually, for a good amount of the day. Was top ten most of the day. I was really impressed with his performance, Justin Haley. At this point, that at this point, that's not even really surprising. He's been killing it, driving for Rick Ware Racing all year. That's been amazing to watch in that 51. Overall, a lot of impressive runs. But now that I got at least some of that out of the way, I want to get to these last 30 laps because these last 30 laps was the cream of the crop. I would say that this race was not the most exciting race. I think there was a lot of strategy which made it entertaining. There was some great restarts. But track position was key in this event as it is many times with the next-gen car. But overall, in a thumbs up, thumbs down world, I, I give this race a thumbs up. I was really happy with the way the race went. And that's even before these last 30 laps. These last 30 laps were insane. You had multiple different strategies. You had Ryan Blaney, short pit, came down pit lane really early on in the fuel window. And then you had Christopher Bell pinning around, I think, I think around 30 laps or 25 laps after what Ryan Blaney had came down pit lane. So he had a lot fresher tires driving up on Ryan Blaney fairly quickly. When he came out of pit lane, he was around seven seven and a half seconds behind ryan blaney it only took him around 15 laps to catch up to ryan blaney with around 28 laps to go even though bell caught up to ryan blaney so quickly blaney was on the defense he played a great role on the defensive side running that high side was refusing to let christopher bell by was reminding me a lot of ryan newman when he used to drive that 12 car just driving real defensive, even though he was a lot slower on a lot older tires, was just running the car perfectly in those last couple of laps until Christopher Bell, the dominant car, the dominant driver of the day, had issues. Bell came over the radio complaining that the motor was blowing up. What? What the f He slowed down severely, had to put it down a couple of gears, even had help. From his teammate Martin Shrix Jr. in the last couple of laps, giving him pushes just so he can maybe maintain some positions. Had the dominant car, the dominant driver. I haven't seen that sort of performance in a while. And just to have it fall apart in those last few laps because of a mechanical error, most likely, is very unfortunate. At the moment, we do not know exactly what the issue was, but we're thinking it has something to do with the motor, which really, it's, it's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate Christopher Bell was by far the dominant car and is not going to leave with the trophy this week. You know how much I sacrificed? At this point, Ryan Blaney is driving away with the victory a couple of seconds out in front of his teammate Austin Sindrick, who is running second. Coming into turns three and four, he's around a second, a second and a half in front of his teammate Sindrick, and he begins to slow coming into three and four. And then coming off the corner, he is out of gas, it appears, and Austin Sindrick goes pass up on the inside. taking the white flag, driving back around to get his second career victory, his first win in 87 races since the Daytona 500. Wow, I am, I'm stunned. This is one of the biggest upset wins we've seen in a long time and it wasn't and it wasn't a fluke either it's not like he won this race on fuel mileage he won this race he was driving in the top five pretty much all day running in the top 10 actually he was running great all race i was really impressed with the way Cindric was racing i was planning on getting on here and complimenting him i've been very harsh on austin Cindric as well 
I was planning on getting on here and complimenting him on such a great run. He led around 70 or 60 something laps before he took the lead from Ryan Blaney on the last lap. It was the best race I've seen Austin Sindrick run in his career, to be honest. In the Cup Series, in his Cup Series career, I've never seen Austin Sindrick run such a great race. And hopefully, this is the turning point for Austin Sindrick, and he can really turn it around in his career. Because it's no secret these last two years have been very difficult for Austin Sindrick. Ever since he started off his career with the Daytona 500 victory. Ever since then, it's been extremely difficult, has had horrible runs, especially compared to his two teammates who have won championships in those in that two year span. But it was a feel good win for when it comes to Austin Sindrick, but it was heartbreak for his teammate Ryan Blaney and Christopher Bell, who was the dominant driver of the day. Coming into this race, Austin Sindrick was sitting right outside the playoffs with this victory. He's locked himself a playoff berth. This is insane. This throws a monkey wrench, I think, into some stuff because I don't think a lot of people had Austin Sendrick making the playoffs. I know I didn't. When I had my predictions early on in the year, I know I didn't pick Austin Sendrick. But congratulations to Austin Sendrick. Hopefully this leads to a breakout season maybe from Sendrick. This has been the best year of his career, I would say. I'm not, I don't have the stats right in front of me but I would say this has been his best season of his career but hopefully he can continue it into the playoffs but let me know your thoughts down below what did you think about the race at Gateway Worldwide Technology Raceway give me all your comments about the race about the insane finish let me know down below but that'll do it for me my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short saying peace